everybody's being very uh oh geez here we go we gotta go we're ready to roll admit all hello hello to all my three o'clock friends hi <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome, and here comes Wendy Masorti. All right, just make sure that we've got everyone. Thank you so much everyone uh, for joining us today for another wonderful edition of Stamp Chat Live. Thank you for joining us and thanks again for all of our APS members who make this possible. We really appreciate your continued membership and support, particularly in these times. So. Uh, again, a word of thanks and graciousness. Um, I hope everybody has thus far enjoyed a beautiful day and maybe gone for a walk or something. It's important to stay healthy in addition to collecting. Today's guest is Ms. Laura Spurway. She's visiting us from Idaho. And uh, Laura is going to be talking with us today about um, using incorporating stamps into the classroom and creating you know new philatelists and a little bit of backstory before i you know move the mic over to miss furway is we uh, i in uh, end of january i'm checking my facebook messages for for the aps facebook page and i get a, a request from a teacher talking about that she's doing this giant collage with stamps and teaching her children how to, you know, geography with stamps, and she needed Greenland, and we were able to accomplish that, and I just thought that she was the cat's meow, and here we were thinking, oh, we'll have Ms. Furway do a, a blog or something, and we were talking before we opened up the waiting room, and alas, how serendipity plays out. So Ms. Furway is to join us in, joining us today as our host, and she's going to kick off a whole educational series. Um, tomorrow we'll have Dr. Kathy Brackbill of the APS. She too will be speaking about stamps teach, but in the C3, uh, the classroom C3A. Without further ado, I'd like uh, Ms. Furway to go ahead and take the show. Hi. Well, hi everyone. Um, I'm gonna take over the screen here in a second and I will give you a warning as well that my internet connection is seeming to bounce me a little bit every once in a while, but it gets me right back in and my audio has been working. So if that happens, bear with me, I apologize. Um, so let me grab screen share here quick and then I will start off. Good, get that screen share, do that. I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like the frozen shot. Yes. All right, it should be loading here. It is. There's Rob Hathaway. Well, uh, <laughs> so as that pulls up, I'll introduce, so um, like I shared, my name is Laura Spurway. I have been a teacher for 13 years now, and I teach in a rural district in North Idaho and now run a gifted and talented program for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. So um, that means that I get to see kids from six different elementary schools and they come and visit me once a week and we get to do hands-on projects. So we do a lot of 3D printing, we do a lot of exploration and really my did we lose our, we lose our teacher? I think we might've lost our teacher. Oh, there she is. Hold on. Can't hear you, Laura. Can you hear us? Thank you everyone for your patience while we rectify this situation. 
I am so sorry. Not sure. Look, we appreciate it that you're joining us. Don't sweat it. Thanks everyone for your patience. We know that if you get tired of it, you're gonna leave the room and we'll see you again tomorrow. But thank you for everyone we'll get in advance for your patience. All right, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so, and I'm not sure if the screen share is working, but I am going to start just talking through my presentation as it tries to connect. Okay. So today what I'm going to share is how I got interested in the stamps, a little bit about how I've used that as a teacher this year, and then where we're at right now, and what my future projects are. So my interest actually begins with a story. Um, I spent my childhood exploring my grandfather's coin collection. Um, this coin collection lived behind my parents' bed in a giant tote and was something that I would get out weekly and look through different presidential mints and a lot of bicentennial copies because that's what my grandfather at the time and a lot of others sort of purchased. And when I was in junior high, my father actually passed away. And that was one of the items that I hoped to hold on to as I grew up and really wanted um, to have passed. <laughs> I am not sure it keeps sending me out like that. I apologize. Exactly. Rural Idaho bandwidth. Oh, sorry. Um, so, like I said, I was hoping to get this coin collection, and as an adult, my mom shared that they had lost it. Um, it was something that we could not find. She sent me a small bag of coins from my grandfather and said that was all there was. Uh, 20 years after my dad passed away, I actually got a phone call from my aunt in Alaska who found, as she was rearranging the furniture, a spot in her wall that had hidden this coin collection that she had forgotten about. So 20 years after this event, I was sent three suitcases full of coins and sort of reignited my passion for collecting. I also ignited my passion for collecting with my daughters and started sharing that with them. And one day we were on Facebook and I noticed a Facebook market book uh, post for a big collection of stamps that somebody had found at an estate sale and thought, this is amazing. This is what I should jump in and would be so much fun just being a collector and enjoying looking at these things with my daughters. So that's really what started me in jumping into stamp collecting. I am definitely a novice um, and just getting started. Let me see if the screen share will work again here. All right. Yay, success. So these were some of the items that came in that first set of things that we found on a Facebook post um, that we just fell in love with because of looking at the artwork and references. My daughter likes to collect presidential coins, so she of course fell in love with the Abraham Lincoln sheet and then started collecting any type of presidential stamp she could find, especially Roosevelt because her dad works at Grand Coulee Dam and really enjoyed um, finding those different connections. So as I was playing, this was in the summer, I got ready to go back to the school year and was doing research on bringing this into my classroom because I really wanted to share with them and found the Stamps Teach program through APS. Said I'm gonna give it a shot, <laughs> signed up for that, and they sent me just bags full of canceled stamps as well as resources for the students to explore and I really just went, we're just gonna dig in and let kids get their hands dirty and run with it. So as we're sharing, the first project um, that I started with my students was because I started becoming the National Geography Bee Coordinator for all six elementary schools this year and thought, Oh, well, not even thought, as I started asking my students, they couldn't even identify the different continents in the world. And I went, oh my goodness, we're not, we're not focusing on these topics enough with our kids. 
So we started the beginning of the year with let's find countries and identify each stamp's country and have a stamp um, place that on the map for where the country is located. Quickly did we realize our stamp was not big enough to fit that. <laughs> um, so we adjusted and started sorting just by continent. And this was the map in mid process. And as you can see in what was shared, they really got stuck on, well, what about Greenland? Greenland as a country is part of Denmark, which is in Europe, but as a piece of land is considered North America. So they really got stuck on what stamps do we put on here? I don't want to put North American stamps and put USA and Canada there because it didn't represent it. And that's when I reached out to Heidi and we were able to get the stamp from Greenland to Denmark complete our map. It was very much not proportional. <laughs> um, but since then, I wish I had an updated photograph of it, but we're locked in our tools and stay at home, so I can't get in there for you guys. So this was the first thing that really students dove into and was a combination of multiple weeks of them getting to explore. From there, I had a lot of different kids that started their topical sorting and they were just going through and really getting passionate about making groups and sets and the things that they were falling in love with and found that APS has stamp album pages available to print out for them. So some of the favorites that the kids started sorting through and learning about the stamps were the Space on Stamps, um, the Santa series. I have a kindergartner who is also, she fell in love with Christmas stamps. So that was a really great thing to let her go for. And I have a young artist in my classroom who draws dragons constantly. So when she found that there was a series that she could start collecting um, specifically on dragons, she absolutely fell in love with that as well. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I jumped into um, using the stamps for is actually professional development with teachers. One of my goals in my role is to bring awareness to the social emotional aspect of what our gifted students go through. Um, we do an activity with adults where they start remembering the labels that are put onto those kids that have all the answers first, that ask more questions than the other students, that are always the kid that leads those projects. And there's so many positive aspects, but we start compiling all of those answers and what I have, and I read those out to them afterwards. So things that our kids say and hear every single day for this specific group of students are things like, you're annoying, you're a brat, you're a show off, you're smart, and that's huge on there because kids say it over and over that they hear the word smart constantly. And they go, it makes me feel like that's who I am as a person and it's the only thing that I have to represent and if I get something wrong that word comes with a lot of pressure to them and they say people tell me I'm smart it also makes me think that I made them feel dumb so there's a lot of impact of these labels and these are all words that were compiled from college students that had gone through gifted and talented programs kids in the program currently as well as adults and the things that they were saying so what I did with stamps and professional development is we took these labels and we started talking about the lunchroom. The lunchroom is our place where we see labeled and they're grouped. Um, so what I asked teachers to do was group their stamps according to lunchroom labels. They created stereotypes and represented them in different table stereotypes and sorted those out. Sorry, my kindergartner is knocking on the door. There's a black, there's a black it's stuff. Bonnie. It's one. No, it's, no, it's like, it's like <laughs> a, it's a rectangle. Okay, like, I'll be back. Bonnie, it's, it's not like a, it doesn't Sorry. Like a real color. It looks okay, like, just stay. Thank it's you. It's like a, it's like. Kinsley, you gotta stop now. Okay, sorry. Um, 
So when they started sorting these stamps, they went through and found things. I wish that we had closer up pictures. They were pretty amazing. Um, things like the greasers and they pulled all the different car stamps together. Things like your 4-H kids and it was an e stamp with an animal on it. They had the good old boys club and a lot of different things that they put um, with anything with male figures on it together. They had the arts groups. They found the chess club and grabbed our chess stamps and had that and we went through and we actually created lunchroom tables out of stamps. When we were done with that, we asked teachers to mix it up and they had to pick out a stamp and walk around the room and find somebody from a different group and start identifying similarities. So taking this concept of how easy it was to separate ourselves and now finding similarities and they found that a lot more difficult and we talked through that about how quickly we were able to group these stamps and to sort them and pull them apart, but how difficult it was to interconnect them. They were looking at things like colors. They were looking at, can we start talking about the theme on here and find an interest? And once they shared a little bit about where their stamp came from, why they put it into a certain lunchroom table, they found that they could find similarities easier. But one thing that I asked them at the end, and I share a quote from a folk singer, is if um, it's from Joan Bays said, if people have to put a label on me, I prefer the first label to be human. And I asked all of the teachers, I said, did anybody walk up to anybody and say, we both have a stamp? It was the one thing that they had in common that nobody identified. And I think our students forget this constantly, that when we say find your similarities, they forget the first the first rule is that we're all human. And this really was an impactful moment for our teachers, but also a great way to bring a hands-on resource into their classroom and show that to them. So I had a lot of teachers that were excited to stay, sign up for the Stamps Teach program for multiple different reasons, but also supported that awareness in the social emotional world for our gifted students. I feel like I'm talking very fast, I apologize. Um, <laughs> So where I'm at now, and I think I'm going a little quick because I'm worried about that internet service. Um, many of you have probably heard about this project before. We were doing some research and came across the Foxborough Regional Charter School Holocaust Stamp Project. They had set a goal of um, collecting 11 million stamps for the 11 million lives that were lost during the Holocaust. And I started sharing this with my fifth graders. They were excited about this project and excited about the message of bringing it back to that we all matter. Uh, they started putting together their own presentations um, and started going into kindergarten through third grade classes first, which I thought was an interesting choice because they didn't want to focus, they shared about the Holocaust, they shared that lives were lost, but they really wanted to focus on the fact that we all matter. So they took individual stamps to each of the kids in the classroom and were able to show them that they were all unique and that they were all special. And they really talked about that impact and started challenging the students in our district to start collecting stamps. Two weeks later, here we are in a stay at home order <laughs> um, and everybody is at home and they've actually began as kids getting together and making mail chains to start um, sending and getting more stamps sent to each other. They're encouraging their family members and putting notes in there saying, we are collecting our stamps. Here's what we're doing this for. Please pull the stamp off the corner. And as you continue your cards, keep them in the envelope. And when you've sent them to 10 people, send them back to us um, with 10 stamps on there. So they're really excited about starting that. Um, I went ahead and shared the project just locally on our Facebook pages here and have actually in the last week and a half gotten about 200,000 stamps dono donated from local collectors, um, people that had collections from relatives that they had inherited that they said, you know, my parent was an educator and we didn't know what to do with these stamps, but we thought this was a great project. So all of a sudden, I have buckets and buckets of stamps at my home. Um, that I'm just starting to dig through and starting to figure out how, how to even handle these and how to go through counting them. Um, so we're just starting into that project a little bit. And some of the things we're going to go into next year, is this going to be a long-term project? Um, 
are doing some stamp meetups and some after school programs and some clubs where they do the counting of the stamps with the project, but also connection and some um, educational activities then too. Um, have a couple of different teachers that are gonna do some novel studies with books like around the world in 80 days and start mapping uh, where the traveling, those points take them and finding stamps in connection with each of the locations that they travel to in those stories. Uh, the one thing that I, I guess today too, I would love to have, I have a couple of questions um, and asking you guys for help and information and resources. One thing I'd like to start doing is some first day cover collecting with kids. They were really interested in doing that and looking at the new stamps. So I, I need to broaden my knowledge of how to do that with them. But then I've also gotten a couple of donations that I'm not sure what how to handle these. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing and share one of those and then would love to open it up for any questions and just conversation pieces. Um, so like I said, one of the things that I've gotten, let me grab it here. I got a donation from a local family of their it was her grandfather's collection and I've got about 15 of these binders um, and they are, they're amazing and they are filled and have just pages and pages in them. So they've donated these for the Holocaust stamp project and said, do with them what you want. And being a person that's starting into collecting, I have no desire to pull these stamps off the pages, um, but also want to honor that they're going for that program. And I guess some of my questions is when you guys get these large collections and things donated, how do I start diving into these? Um, where, where would you start and different things as well? Um, so I guess I will just open it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead and unmute yourselves and let's begin to indulge Ms. Furway. Hi, yeah. Be happy to start if you like. Go, Roddy, go. Uh, I have um, 115, I have 170 uh, albums on the wall. Uh, I, years ago, I was in the pre print albums like that. Uh, they're considered uh, advanced beginner to intermediate collector type stuff because they don't have a space for every stamp you might want. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get more specialized, you end up making your own pages and layouts for all the specialized stuff. Uh, one great disadvantage of those albums you've got is that if you, the pages get really uh, full on both sides, stamps can get damaged because they catch against each other when you turn the pages. Okay. But you get a really, you know, full album. You put called interleaving between the pages so stamps don't touch stamps. Generally, a quick evaluation when I look at a, a, a collection like that to evaluate is I'll turn to the pages that are likely to have keys. The very first Great Britain. Is there a one, two, one or two on there, a, a penny black or a two blue? Or I'll turn to the uh, United States and I'll see if there's a, a, a what what is it actually a non-reproduction real, not, not the 1947 centennial copy of it. Uh, it's got number one or two, the five cent uh, red brown uh, uh, Ben Franklin or the 10 cent black Washington. That'll probably be missing in those based on the fact that the albums aren't that expensive. Um, but then I'd go to the Colombians and see how high up the Colombians it goes. Does it go to the value? Does it go to the dollar values? And what's the condition like? Uh, then I'll go to the Trans-Mississippis. We, we all know about those, right, Heidi? <laughs> hey. Yeah. As, and uh, as uh, CJ, told us, CJ told us, you're looking for those dollar and two dollar values, the Eads Bridge, the uh, Cattle in the Storm values. And if they're in good shape, you know, that's hundreds of dollars. Um, then you turn to the airmail section, perhaps, and you look for the Zeppelins, which is hundreds of dollars. If they're in good shape. Um, and based on what keys are or are not present, you know, you, you can quickly come up with a very ballpark value. Um, if there are no keys present, if it's all beginner stamps, if there are bent perfs, missing corners, thins, heavy cancellations, 
there's going to be a, basically a youth collection that never had any serious money spent on it. It could be massive, but you know, if you never if you never spend money on it, your only way of having something great is an accidental find, which happens, but it doesn't happen any more often than someone winning, winning a lottery ticket. That's how you evaluate a 15 um, album collection. I would be very surprised if you showed it to a stamp dealer, if uh, if those keys were all missing. And it could well have a penny, a penny black. It could well have a, a Colombian or a $1 Trans Mississippi. If any of those are there, then we need to look at a very careful look at, at everything. Uh, but having said that, if none, if you can't find any keys in all the areas you look for, go to your stamp club and, and see if it, German specialists look at the uh, German area. Have uh, you know specialist collectors look for keys in other things? I I listed the ones I know to look for. Is that helpful, Laura? Yeah, I, yeah, I no, just no, no. If, none, if none of the keys are there, you know, it's basically going to be sold by the pound. And end up donated to youth. Yeah, no, I appreciate that a lot because all kids, I'm gonna find something that's worth thousands. <laughs> so, uh, right. There's an excellent video by Graham Beck in his Boring Stamp series on what to do with an inherited or donated collection. It'll tell you all of this. At the end of the day, there is great value there in. in Getting other people interested in the hobby, or getting yourself interested in the hobby. Uh, I mean, every every stamp is worthy of study, no matter how inexpensive. You 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 found that out yourself. Yeah. I will mute. I've said everything I do. But I buy I buy collections and lots like that all the time, and then boil them down into my 170 albums on the wall. Which is all, which is all cheap. <laughs> Before you do leave, from. Laura, you had said, you had asked, like, how do you even determine the number of stamps? So Rob is telling us in the chat to count them by weight. That all right. paper, all small size definitives will be at least 8,000 a pound. All large commemoratives will be closer to 5,000 a pound. We're talking loose here, you know, not stuck in the album. Okay. If they're just, uh, if they're like this, they are like this, you know, this is uh, eight pounds of U.S. stamps, mixed, small, and large. I would expect it to be um, 50,000 stamps. That's what I had um, somebody drop off about four bags full yeah. uh, for us. So. Well, those look Just like they're nice on paper still. So you cut it in, into a third if it's on paper. These are all already off. Thank you. Yeah. Other people might have their own opinions. Depends on where you buy your stamps and what kind of stamps you're talking about. The, the pound count, the pound, count per pound will differ. And, and yeah, Rick Howell says, and it makes a difference whether on or off paper. Thank you, Rick. I'm going to mute. Wonder, I've bugged it enough here. I'm wondering how often individuals that are collecting are going to the schools. I know as a coordinator at our school, we have a lot of after school programs. So I guess I would encourage people, if you haven't, reach out to the local schools. We'll do one or two week after school programs for just an hour. And we are always looking for experts to come and share something that they're passionate and in love with. And I could see this really being a great thing at schools if people have things to go and explore. So I don't know if people have gone out and done that at all or would um, be interested, but I encourage you, everybody that is here to reach out to a, a nearby elementary school or junior high. Um, I think you'd find a lot of kids that would fall in love with this with you. I will make a comment, I guess, that Somebody else jump in. I know that in 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 the last 55 years, I've been involved in about four different stamp clubs for years at a time. More than a decade or so ago, I know the Arlington Stamp Club. Uh, I was involved in, in the scouting program quite a bit. Um, 
my boys are now in their thirties. Uh, and also we, we, we reached out to schools in those days. They were very, you know, you had to go, you had to, you were a stranger danger type situation. That's, you know. uh, but uh, you can, of course, go through all the. Uh, volunteer background. These days, that wasn't quite so formalized in years. Um, I do have a, an in in a junior high, and then I've got a son teaching middle school science, and I have a nephew and his wife teaching middle school uh, music and science. Um, so maybe it should be revisited, maybe through, through family context. But uh, I know that without my middle school uh, stamp club. In, 1970, Mr. Johnston, who was the chair of the of the uh, stamp club, 30 guys. There were no girls. I'm sorry. I don't know why. It was too geeky. Um, you know, we uh, we learned everything there is to know about philately that we wanted. We could we could possibly. He collected in Blue Scott International albums, and he had 20 volumes. Of them. Um, I was getting more and more specialized into the United States and then U.S. revenues at that point. And I was like 13, 14, 12, 13, 14. Um, but without that junior high getting me into the specialized specialization, I doubt I would have continued. I would have been like most collectors who are exposed to it in, you know, before or up to junior high and then drop it until they find themselves nearing retirement and they get back into it. That's like more than half of the collectors have that story. You can open it up and I'm sure people will agree. Uh, without the junior high stamp club, you know, you, you uh, probably drop, the, drop out of the hobby when life interrupts. But um, I do know, I have a, a, lot, a lot of hope that I do know that in the 80s, maybe in the 90s, there was a big program from APS and the USPS called Ben Franklin Stamp Clubs, involved in stamp clubs in other states that helped with those programs in the 80s and 90s. I, I believe all, all the money dried up because of short-sightedness in the USPS. And those programs started, stopped more than 20 years ago, but we have not yet seen the, or reap the benefits of those collectors exposed from those uh, government-sponsored stamp clubs uh, age where they'll, they'll be coming back to the hobby. We have yet to see them come back to the hobby yet, but in the next few years, we should know. I will now mute, as promised. Well, Laura's no. certainly pollinating future philatelists, that's for sure. Well, and I think to Rob's point, uh, a lot of what I focus on is social mm -hmm. emotional support for kids, and they need to find their place. And there are so many kids that it is the chess club. It's finding a small group that want to explore stamps with them. And especially our very bright gifted students like these very intricate, fine detail kinds of programs. Um, it's, it's an interesting world and it's something that I'm passionate about because you do find kids in my program, there's a higher rate of high school dropout. There is a higher rate of suicide attempts and self-harm. Um, and a lot of that is being from feeling disconnected, but also really being able to see connections worldwide that their peers necessarily aren't taking in because they're very focused on their own, what is happening to them and their own self. So there's a lot of deep thought happening with these students. So I find that small things like this and small groups and passion groups that connect is where these kids find their home. And it's something that they say, those are, I found my people and they need those people. So I just, um, getting into the schools, I know can sometimes be hard. The counselor at schools is usually the person that sets up these after school programs. So they're a great person to reach out to um, as far as getting that foot in the door to say, we just wanna offer something. Um, also local park and recs. We've had our local park and rec program is starting to offer more club-based programs like this. So not necessarily always our athletics, but our academic groups as well. The, oh, the ISWSC likes to help in these programs also. And our youth stamp outreach guy will send you more stamps. So there you have it. 
Yes, that would be amazing. Now, how did, you, how did you uh, hear about the Foxboro project? Uh, the Foxboro project, I was just doing research online with stamps and schools and stamps in education and stamps in classes. Um, it caught my eye because I take our junior high students to DC and New York every other summer as well. Um, we visit the Holocaust Smithsonian. Um, my uncle, I lived with my uncle after my father passed when I was younger and him and his wife, they were Jewish. Um, and he passed away just a few years ago. And one of the stories that a student shared was from 9-11 and said, you know, your uncle had held class that day, he was a college professor and a historian. He was an Egyptologist. Um, and he stood up in front of the class on the day of 9-11 and recapped the events and then shared and said, I had ancestors that were teachers during the Holocaust and they continued to teach, so I will do the same. Um, so when I came across this, it just became a very personal project for me and was something that I said, I want to go for it. And I kind of am diving it all in with it. It's a big, big undertaking, but something that I felt was important, especially in my area, there's not a lot of awareness. Um, so I just thought this would be a great opportunity to build that. We, we currently house the 11 million stamps at the, uh, the APS. So the, before these events, uh, these current events, we were, um, our, uh, Dr. Kathy Brackbill was the committee chair to, we're, we will have a permanent exhibit of these stamps. And uh, friends, it really is quite something to bear witness to 11 million stamps. And we do encourage you what we were, we were going to have its day, you know, premiere during summer seminar, um, but regrettably that's been canceled. Um, but do keep keep tabs on the exhibit. And that is forthcoming. Yeah. Anybody else have uh, experience with stamps teach or have a question or comment for, for Laura while we're on the line? Laura, do you have any more questions for our for our collectors, how they could help you? Um, you know, and I think I can probably ask that first day covers and new current releases, I guess I would ask for the short and simple of how do I access this? It is overwhelming to me for some reason when I look up how to postage and make the envelope, put it into an envelope, send that to a place. What is the easiest resource that somebody knows that sort of explains that process um, for getting kids started in that or myself even? <laughs> Friends, come on now. We have to have some FTC. I'm, I'm, I can't offer any assistance. This is not my field of expertise. So please put the shyness away. Let's go. Somebody. I, I unmuted because nobody's jumping in. Thanks, is Rob. It, uh, I'm going to pull up a web page on my screen. Um, I'm gonna, I think some of the best instructions, this, their, their instructions apply even if you want to write for the, for the uh, day cover version. But the Postmat, Postmark Collectors Club maintains a, live, a discussion, a forum, uh, and a database of all the upcoming special event cancels. And they have instructions of four or five different ways to go get them. Occasionally we'll get one, especially if I see one that's a Basset Hound or something. Mm -hmm. And, and they and let me pull up their web page if I can do it real quick. And you you know while 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 Rob pulls up the web page, it was first day covers, correct, Laura? Yeah. Because there is a there is a first day cover association. There is. Uh, it's really uh, complicated because you know they, they have all these different kinds, cached, uh, a thousand cache makers unaddressed, addressed, uh, hand painted first day covers. Um, the best place to go to learn some of that and touch some of those resources, I think would probably be the virtual stamp club, which is an online forum. Uh, it's, it's run by uh, hey. uh, show you um, 
resources. Here we go. Um, and uh, while you're pulling, Nicholas Doré, postmarks.org in the chat. Uh, yes, I, I, I've got it. I'll share my screen if you want me to. By all means. Okay. Um, your screen. I haven't found the instructions that I think are so great yet. That's why I hadn't done it initially. Richard, I know we can get to you if, if we need any help with the first day covers. Okay. I'm looking for... Uh, oh. A museum convention about... Uh, resources. I need to go back to the home page here. Uh, resources. Um, post office center and resources. All resources. Um, Laura, look, I, did you know about this website? No, I appreciate all of just the extra sites and the places to go and check out that people are sharing in the chat too. I'm not in the right place. I'm looking. Um... All right. Well, we're going to. I don't know how to boot you off with the share screen. Oh, get rid of me. <laughs> I always have to figure out um, what screen of three. That, um, you should have it back again. There we go. There we go. So this that that's excellent. But the, the Postmark Collectors Club will tell you how to get special event cancels of all kinds, not just first day covers. The, the instructions for first day covers um, works. The, the, uh, the, the instructions for getting their special event cancels, which aren't first day cancels, but you know, if there's a, if there's, if, if in uh, Boise, Idaho, there's a annual potato festival, there's probably a special cancel for it. That the, for the collectors, I'm just making this up. That collectors of potatoes on stamps just have to have, and the post collectors club collects, collects the cancel stuff, stamps, and they tell you how to get get any cancel from any postmaster. Very cool. We do yeah. drop a giant potato every year for New Year's down in Boise. Oh, wow. <laughs> Instead of the ball drop, they do the giant potato drop. Well, oh, my that my my psi powers knew there had to be something like. That. <laughs> well, I like. You, yes, and then I like to see all the smiles of the people on, yeah. on, the, on the chat there for the giant potato. Excellent. Heidi, this is Gary. Um, the American First Day Cover Society, which is afdcs.org. Oh, can everybody hear Gary? Okay, thank you. Go ahead, sorry. American First Day Cover Society has a fun for kids section on the website, American First Day Cover Society, AFDCS.org. And right off the first page, you'll see the uh, Fun for Kids section. So there's lots of resources out there that uh, philatelists uh, spend time, you know, the philatelic organizations spend time uh, trying to figure out ways of attracting kids to the hobby. That's one that, uh, uh, that is available. Perfect, thank you. Sure. Richard Morrow uh, introduced me to a, uh, I don't know if, I'm going to put you on the spot, Richard, the princess, the Thai princess who was a, who, who taught stamps. Richard, why don't you give us a primer? Yeah, she, she's actually a very popular in Thailand, Princess uh, Sirinton. Um, she trained as a teacher amongst other things. But she's also a stamp collector. I was, I was quite interested to read in Stamp and Coin Mart in 2014 that she recognises they're quite useful for teaching purposes as well. You know, inherently didactic. Um, so she, yeah, she's she's um, uh, you know used them herself and was showing some examples of her favourite stamp chain kind of Thai history. Uh, yeah, she. Um, I, I was just thinking in terms of the UK. Um, there is a Stanley Gibbons catalogue for um, FDCs, uh, uh, first day covers, uh, because some of them now can be, you know, they, they go for, one or two of them go for about £100. So, you know, some of them, they, they're certainly accruing some value. 
um, which is always good for British material. But um, also you might want to chat with, in the UK, there's um, the Stamp Active Network. They're desperately, myself included, trying to um, kind of crack our, um, crack our education system and, and get, get some participation with the schools. Um, um, well, that makes you know, me... and we're, with I've, I've made inquiries. And, and pardon me for jumping on you, but but that just made me think of the administration because I, I, I worked in education for ten years, Laura. Um, how how was the administration? Uh, were, were they open? Yeah. Um, can you, you I mean, clearly you were able to bring it into school. But can here. Okay. Um, yeah, no, my, actually my assistant superintendent was really excited about the Holocaust stamp project specifically. It's kind of a passion area of hers. So that was a great entrance. Um, Idaho seems to be continuing to cut history credits and requirements for our kids. And it's not something that I am loving at all. So any extra exposure to history and to get them excited about it was really encouraged by all of them. The other thing that I did this year is I know APS did on Giving Tuesday was the stamps teach where you donated and you could send that to other mm -hmm. teachers. So I did that and sent it to a fellow teacher and it just I'd encourage people to participate in that because just getting those in your mailbox and kids saying, I want to know what that is, started that intrigue with teachers. So I really commend APS for having that as they're giving Tuesday this year. And really that, send it as a surprise, look up at a teacher, um, a local teacher at the high school, you can get on their websites and say, who's a history teacher? Just send them something as a gift. You may spark an interest that they didn't know was there. Um, and just have that surprise opportunity would be really neat. So checking out that program in Britain too, that was really a great one. Thank you. And thanks, thanks for reminding me. Again, we thank you so much all to our AP members, our APS members, uh, because of your, your membership and your generous support of the American Philatelic Society, we are able to provide these sorts of resources to the educators of America. So thanks again. My son who teaches science loves to get mail addressed to the science department. Chair? Yeah. That's Rob. <laughs> oh, he's gonna stay muted. Do you have, um, oh. I was just wondering, um, at the light, where, where I work, we don't break up collections. We, we keep them as archives in their own right. It does lead to some duplication within collections, but we try and um, keep them as in, you know, we, we just keep them intact. With that large collection, although it might not necessarily be inherently valuable, I mean, I've, I've not looked at it or, or gone through or, or seen, I think there's been some good advice on how to assess that given. Yeah. Um, but it might be, you know, one of the alternatives as well is that you could keep the collection intact. Uh, in a way as, as an archive of an old collection. So it, it, it kind of links generations. The other thing as well is, um, are you looking at kind of um, digital platforms, uh, kind of doing stuff online with the, with the kids, developing online exhibitions, um, you know, even, even creating virtual kind of activities um, out of these things. So good example we've been playing with a, a good way to teach kids about errors and varieties are spot the difference competitions um you know to get them into the basics of, of looking at the stamps closely pop quizzes how to read a stamp you know where where's it from what's the value are there any imprints for printers on there but kind of doing that digitally as well as physically um and, and keeping a kind of a, a, a central reference resource as well of, of your own yeah, um, like I said, I'm really novice at all of this. Um, I haven't, I love that idea and concept. And especially right now with the stay at home order, we're, I'm kind of reassessing saying, okay, how do I offer all of these things online? Starting to do some videos and chats with them. Um, had sort of brainstormed the other day during our transmiss chat 
doing some activities where kids started designing and thinking about stamps during this time. So turning that into digital access, I think, is something that I have the time to play with right now. Um, so I love that concept. I love the spot the difference ideas. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, so some of the things we've been thinking, like uh, we, we did, um, one of the things I did early on was how to take images of stamps online, put them into Word, blow them up, print them out, mm -hmm. cut them out, and you've got jigsaws for children on particular themes. Um, yeah. The other one we did was, again, designing stamps. We were looking at public health stamps and then put out a call for kids to design a public health stamp for COVID-19. So it's a great way for the kids to begin to kind of understand what the hell is going on around them at the minute because it's a pretty scary place for adults to be more disorientating for kids but it was also getting them quite creative and had someone do some pencil sketches but of course you could do collages of, of images to pull stuff up and, and at the same time learn. I mean the, I'd say digital platforms as well and doing stuff online it, you know it's really thinking outside the box and teaching them without realising they're being taught. You yeah. know, and, and stamps are so great for that, really are. Um, so yeah. And that, that's from Dr. Richard Morrill. He's with the British uh, Library. He curates the philatelic collection, so. Uh, and this, I'm gonna jump in with Rob with a quick comment. Facebook and Twitter, Twitter, uh, Facebook, the Virtual Stamp Club and other places are filling up with all the pictures of the new stamps that are coming out for COVID-19. Mm. You could show a couple of those, like the brand new uh, Switzerland one, which is blow up of, of the, of the, uh, of the, what the virus looks like itself. Most of them so heroes of the, the emergency, like nurses and, and uh, but you could show them a couple of stamps and then have them design their own. Maybe the big thing is the, uh, uh, for them will be the, 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 the uh, experience of, going to school on their, from home, you know, and that's. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm really curious to see the kids takes, especially this morning, I took my six-year-old out to do a teddy bear and heart hunt in the uh, local neighborhoods with people putting teddy bears out in their windows and hearts on their windows, so kids that are at home can go out and do something fun, and even that on a kid's version of a stamp of those memorable moments of that people coming together and doing those things would be really neat. We have some, uh, okay, so we might exam, uh, examine the American Topical Association. They keep lists of stamps sorted by their topic. So yes. that, that, that's good to know. And then Markand, who's joining us all the way from India. Namaste and welcome Markand. Thank you for joining us. He has a link um, in the chats to a YouTube. Markand, do you want to talk about that? Because I can't click on it right now. But he says that this, this person is doing amazing work by preparing all these promotional videos for philately. Yeah, this guy is from UK. I believe, and he's preparing some very nice videos to promote philately. It's very easy to understand, particularly for children when Laura is focusing all his work, all her work. So, I mean, she can use these videos and share this link with the students, and I'm sure it will be very helpful. You just click on one of the video of this link and you will be able to see it. It says, uh, let me tell you what exactly is his title. Exploring stamps. That's what he's calling it upon. That would be our friend, uh, Graham Beck. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. And, and Rob had mentioned him. Yeah, we, APS is a proud sponsor of the, that incredible series. So absolutely, that he is an amazing resource for yeah. anyone. Thank I've you. been able to get on a couple of his videos. Thank you, Mark. And um, I meant to mention him earlier as well. The kids, he had a video about the uh, Apollo space missions and sending the stamps in that the astronauts took in their boot. Um, and that is what kids fell in love with the very first was sort of that experience and the news story and really pushed them to start finding all those space stamps. So he really, he does a great job in getting kids to love him. 
I'd just like to reiterate that uh, Laura what is the facilitator for the National Geography B, right? So you, you um, oversee that. Yes, I oversee it for our six elementary schools. Um, I do their competition and the, uh, we had all of our kids qualify to go on to the state competitions this year, but with the situation, those have been canceled. So we're still, like, we're celebrating those kids. And one of the things that I'm doing for them is actually with the Stamps Teach uh, stamps, they're each getting their own set of startup collections as well as one of their prizes. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and share that how to get a cancel. Yes. Okay. I put the link in the uh, chat. I hope, uh, I'm sure Heidi will give you a text to the, uh, the chat or you can cut and paste. Um, this is what I, I was looking for. There's of it too. <laughs> uh, they, this, this, oh, this that maintains a list of all the calendar, the calendar of all the, uh, are coming out in the United States. And by the way, there's a very good one also in Great Britain, GBCC. Uh, Great Britain has some beautiful cancels. Uh, but anyway, they have a they have an entire you know procedure preparing covers. It's a very arts and crafty thing thing you know that kids. Oh, cool. um, then from there, uh, preparing postcards. You know, you don't have to make co covers. You can start with cardstock. You can. Make, you can uh, make a montage and turn it into a postcard and then get a cancel and a stamp on it. Those are called maximum cards. They're very popular in Europe. Uh, and here's how you send for the postmarks, okay? How you nest things. Um, I'm going to jump back to their gallery so you can see what I'm talking about. First day covers, that's one of them. Uh, but here's the calendar. Every month, oh, there are dozens of these that each child, you know, would have, would, well, right now there's not dozens. It must be COVID-19 is killing all this. Hey. Yeah. Upcoming postmarks, okay. Well, there's usually several dozen out here every month. And, um, you know, there'll be a topic. Here's one for the 75th anniversary of Iwo Jima. Send away for that, you know, maybe. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day. You can still get that one. You can send away for the cancel, even though you know it was in, for about 30 days after the date of the cancel, just like you can for the first day covers. Cool. And these that same is, to get the first day cover cancel. That is perfect and kind of summarizes everything that I was looking for in that topic. So yeah. that's a perfect resource. The resources okay. for the AFDCS is going to get much more complicated. AFTCS is the great place to go, but this is simple. Does this does this cover Rob? Because uh, I remember when I first started with the APS, I learned about how you could get it canceled. That you could get your mail on a dog sled. That's pretty cool too, Laura. That the kids yeah. can get their their mail back with the dog sled cancellation. Exactly. Um, every year, the Iditarod has a special event cancel. Okay. And it'll be on this calendar. It'll tell you exactly where to write it, write, write to. Okay, you might want to uh, get a picture of a of a of a dog sled and you know put a dog stamp, one of the military working dog stamps on it from last year, perhaps. Oh, Just, I like that. Yeah, they would get the uh, 2021 I did a rod cancel. It, yes, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, not just first day covers. First day covers are spectacular, but you you don't have to wait for a, a stamp. Uh, in the, in the program coming up, you can find a stamp that meets whatever you're teaching and find a cancel that meets whatever you're teaching and go for that. And you can let your, your, your grade schoolers design their own covers or postcards. I, you are speaking straight to my heart. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska um, and do, so I went to the start of the Iditarod every year and my sister is a pilot and was at the final of the Iditarod this year and last year in Nome, and I do a whole unit on the Iditarod and hope to one day be the teacher on the trail. So that would be an amazing, an amazing one to get. <laughs> for me. For well, screen. if serendipity has any way of working out, then I think it will. Considering how we met and how this has all taken place now, 
friends, it seems like uh, yet another hour has flown by here at Stamp Chat in, in the respect of your time. Um, we're going to bid a fond adieu again. Thank you so much to all our APS members. You make it possible for our, because we have been speaking about youth, it's, it's a great time to re recall that we have the 25 under 30. So for our friends that are under 30 years old, they can become members and support these great programs for just $25. Um, any information that you'd like to perhaps share or swap with Laura Spurway, please go ahead and send it my way at Heidi at stamps.org. Uh, we appreciate you all being on the call and for all the enthusiasm and the shared schema. Laura, thanks so much for joining us from all the way out in Idaho. Uh, we bid you safety and thank you for for incorporating our program stance to teach another member supported program. We really appreciate it. Friends, we'll bid you adieu. We'll see you tomorrow again at three o'clock with uh, Dr. Kathy Brackwell of the American Philatelic Society. So long, take care and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>